Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys a couple of different things about exhaust and the issue that I ran to on this one, which I'm, I'm some guys already had foreseen, but um, they didn't know why that I was running this uh, smaller exhaust that I already had with the 1600 um, on this engine, and it's because we already had modified it to work with this trailer hitch system, and I didn't really want to have to go through the whole motions of changing it. But I'm going to show you that I definitely have to do it and why. So we know our jetting is pretty good right on. Uh, we checked a lot of different things to indicate that. But if you look here, uh, you see how this collector was made on these. Um, these were actually made by MP and they're not as well made as the old Fortune, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. I'm also going to show you a couple different exhaust systems in this video. So it's going to be all about different types of exhaust and ones that work and what they work on better. And things like that so anyway get back to this um with it see how this collector is really tapered and it goes down to the smaller i think this is an inch and three eighths um it might be an inch and a half but it's i haven't measured it but it doesn't matter because it's way too small um but this inch and three eighths type of exhaust like this is mainly designed for like a 1600 or something like that uh it may give you a little bit more performance than the original not much maybe but um it might be something if you have a 1600 and you just wanted to get something a little bit better than the original. I would actually go to the inch and a half at least on that. Just because then you can do more to the engine at that point. But what we ran into is this is uh, what's happening is because this is so restricted, it's building up a lot of heat. Uh, we notice the engine is not uh, revving up to the top end very well. Uh, it's working fine at the top end, but it just I can just feel it. I know the difference when something's very restricted. It's exhaust or you know more carburetion one of the two so i'm looking here first this is because this is the problem so if you have a 1600 you can change to this type of exhaust here this is an extractor and we also uh at the same time i'll show you this in this video because you might be new to the channel if you're new to the channel welcome and thank you for coming please um, leave a comment that's our big thing leave a comment uh look at the other comments and like or dislike the ones you like down below. It's really important for that interaction to give us a, a lot of uh, more uh, ability for people to find the videos. So we need your help there. Uh, so anyway, we flange this one here and put it on. And what that does is that eliminates that, that clamp thing here that's normally here that, that constantly slides off. Um, and especially when we have this thing in this restricted zone, um, it, uh, it, 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 it kind of... Uh, it keeps it from sliding out, you know. So if you have a performance engine, a really good idea to just uh, put these, get these flanges. You just get them at Carcraft. You can weld them on, or wherever you want, uh, and buy those. So the single quiet pack is good for a 1600. I have another one, a couple different ones that are good for 1600s. But I'm going to jump ahead and show you guys uh, where performance is and how that these work. This is a performance exhaust. This is called a merged exhaust, and if you look here at the flange, this is where a lot of this makes all the difference. If you see how these come together, um, they actually work. There are some of these, and some of these are more tuned even than others, um, where this actually sucks exhaust from that one because of the shape of it. And then it goes into this, um, into this collector here. And if you notice, this is quite a bit larger than the other one. This might be an inch and five eighths, I think. You have an inch and five eighths. I think they have an inch and three quarters and a two inch. I've even seen some of them have two inch flanges. And depending on your engine size, uh, and we're going to get into that a little bit. I'm going to show you on paper uh, some of those things so that you understand the principle of exhaust systems and how that they work and how that you can uh, get more power or lose power from having too big a one. So these work really well with just about this side here would work almost as good uh, with up to maybe a small two liter. Um, if you go to the bigger two liters, you're going to want a bigger flange even than that. Um, but th even on a uh, 1835 or something like that, this could like give you so much more flow. It could give you several more uh, more horsepower just because of the flow alone and uh, with that. They also have these here. This is a four tip exhaust. Um, pretty low in performance, but I'd say it's still above exhaust, above the stock exhaust. Has a little bit different sound. 
I don't really like the sound because it, it kind of resonates with the engine and with the engines you know when you have the engine at a certain RPM uh, the resonance from the exhaust kind of uh, uh, makes it kind of loud inside the car and I don't really like this type of exhaust because of that reason so um, I typically won't run them uh, they do they look cool on a bus I think they look kind of neat on uh, if you have a lowered bus and you have these things they don't look too bad but they are kind of noisy and I'll show you some others here in a minute all right so let's do a cold start here on this and then we're gonna fire this up let you hear it oh keys we need keys so let's see how it sounds cold start main thing is just this I bet you our choke is stuck. We haven't checked the choke again in the morning. So I think uh, Yeah, we're gonna have to adjust that choke. Let's get the thing started, we're gonna be a minute. Yeah, so the choke is slammed shut. We're gonna have to readjust it. We were still working on some of that stuff, so let's do that. We're gonna have to get it we're gonna have to do a little more than that. Okay, try again. I guess the choke was open, but we have that's how your that's how the single that's how your single quiet pack sounds. Um, it's usually not quite as loud as this one is because this is a 2007 engine. So we're still dialing this thing in. We're not done with it yet. Oh, you shut it off. Yeah, we're still dialing this thing in. We, can, we still not, we haven't finished all the stuff we need to do on it yet. Um, we've been testing it and driving it and different things. Just a lot of little things to work out. So you have here, this is the Empy style uh, version of the original one. I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, this is the uh, the Empy style uh, Thunderbird muffler. And again, if you look here at the way that this is shaped, it's very restricted. It, it, it The way that the air goes into that collector is not the same as the old four-tuned uh, Thunderbird. Let's go take a look at one. But these do work okay on like a 1600, you know, maybe even a 1776, uh, something like that. About That's kind of where I cut it off. I would say anything much bigger than that. I would definitely want a bigger slant flange than that on there. So, so in here, I have this real four-tuned uh, Thunderbird muffler. Yeah, this is from the 80s. And it's pretty beat up, uh, of course. Yeah, you know, it could be cleaned up. Maybe this needs to be rewelded. We used to have problems a lot on this engine here. It was a 1835 with a pretty high flow um, setup on it, and it used to get really hot back here because it had, uh, you know, so much restriction, even for the engine that I had. So it probably should have had, you know, a merge system would have been really nice on this car when I had this. It would have really ran much better. Um, but if you look at the collector here, see how the taper is nice and even and slow. It doesn't have that real long or that real short uh, taper. Uh, that's actually a better performing muffler than the other one. So even these with a single quiet pack was a better performing muffler than the new MP style ones. I'm not trying to rag on MP. I mean, some of their stuff is terrible, some is good, and some of it's okay. And I'd say that's kind of the okay. So. Um, that that's not a bad muffler, but it's you know it's just not as good as the old ones are. So if you could find one of these at a swap meet, um, it'd be better. So the fourteen uh, Thunderbird system. This is the you know the dual mufflers. Hardly anybody runs these now. Most guys have the big you know sidewinder setup. They have the sidewinder as well. Um, I don't have one yet. I'm going to have to buy one, I believe, for the camper because it's probably the best exhaust for it. I'll go over that in a little bit too. Then they also have this uh, single tip muffler. I'll show you what that looks like. This thing's been sitting here a little while. It's kind of dusty. I've been driving some other things. I've got a couple issues I'm going to try and resolve on it right now. And the cobwebs come as soon as I drive. Don't drive it. I got major black widows. But we wrapped this one up um, yeah, because uh, you know. But you can kind of see how they work because it, it's got an issue with the engine uh, being too close to this. Thing here and that's why the paints burned off there if you see right here but anyway they're, they're, I can't get into exactly why that is in this video It'll be too long but anyway uh, the exhaust system on this 
I would say this is performing probably a little bit, maybe a little bit better than probably the single quiet pack. Um, some guys are going to disagree with that. I think it actually works better. It's very cheap. It's very clean. It looks really nice on the back of the bus. You know, it looks more like an original, and that's kind of what I wanted on this van originally. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be changing that pretty soon. We're talking about another motor build, um, if you guys are interested in that. Would you guys like to see a 1968 be built, a 74 by 92? Let me know. Put it in the comments. All right, so this one hasn't started in a while. Uh, it's been here for a couple months. And let's just see if it's cold starts. Uh, it does take a little bit of cranking when it's been a while. Why not top in there, Chris? Well, let's see if the battery's up. What do you think? You think it'll be up? I don't know. Usually it is. Usually it lose, loses the prime in the carburetor. Takes a little bit of cranking. All right. Stop and uh, stop and pump the pedal once. Pump pump the pedal a few times now. It'll start right up. Right. Yep. Now this one it has a really big cam, so that's not just the choke. But if you can hear how that sounds, going down the road, this thing sounds really nice and quiet. Uh, it's a little bit quieter than the quiet pack. It's very similar sounding, and I think it's a little bit more slow than the quiet pack is. I think it's a little bit better. That's how that sounds. So if you're interested in one of those, that's a called a that's called a single tip exhaust made by Ampy. This is a 1776. Um, it's actually good performing for that engine. Uh, if you go much bigger than that, then like I said, you might want to go with something else. But it actually works well with the 1776. So if you've got that small of a motor, I mean, that's a nice little motor for a van or engine for a van. You guys don't want to see. You want to comment on that too. That's okay. Engine bike, engine. motorbike. Motorbike. What is it? Engine cycle, motorcycle, engine boat, motorboat. I don't know. Everybody wants to say that engine, you know, is, is only a term for, you know, four cycle engines, but people use it all the time. And it's funny, they all do refer to four, you know, four cycle engines. So this is a stock, uh, pea shooter exhaust. Some guys call them that, you know, pea shooter. Um, and these actually, the thing that's good about the pea shooter is you get a lot of torque from this exhaust system. And some guys will want to take them off right away and they go and put a single quiet pack on. They want to get that horsepower. But then what happens is sometimes you lose your torque. And we're going to show you, I'm going to show you on a chart how the exhaust systems can benefit you or not benefit you. Um, and you can actually lose power by putting too big a one on after this. Um, if you hear this cold start here, let's, let's do a cold start on this one. This one should be one pump of the, pump of the pedal and it should start right up because it was just started up yesterday. How's that? One pump starts right up. So that's how they sound. If you guys are new to VWs, or if you want to go back to original, that's how that sounds. So. And the thing I like about that on the 40 horse is it actually gives you the torque. You, it gives you a little more torque with the engine, and I think it's a good combination that with the stock exhaust and the big bore kit and the. Uh, uh, and also the, the the heads that I or the uh, ratio rockers that I put on here. They're not full ratio rockers. They're just 1600 rockers I put on it. On this car, this is a 36 horse. Uh, the, these P shooters were actually straight piped. So the reason I did that, I'll show you how it sounds. Uh, but I the reason I did that is because it actually uh, it has too restricted of a flow for the 36 horsepower engine. And we were able to get one more main jet up by doing the straight pipe. I believe that's what it what created it. Let's go ahead and do a cold start on it. Pull the choke. Don't forget. <laughs> you know, I just have to pull the choke, their manual choke on this car. I gotta show him how to start a car. This thing starts right up every time. Oh, 
how that sounds, it's a little louder, a little rattier, but it still sounds kind of cool. Yeah, it's a little rattier than the other one, but it sounds kind of neat. You might like that if you want to have the 36 horse and you just want to get a little more juice out of it. Uh, straight pipe it and then make sure you redo your jetting accordingly because it's going to probably let you pick it up once. And that's how I got a little more power out of this thing. So ideally with your exhaust, what you're trying to look for is you're looking for your exhaust to go straight through the pipe. Um, and if you go too small with your exhaust, you're going to have restricted exhaust. And if you go too large with your exhaust, you end up with this situation here, where you have turbulence. You have air going through the exhaust and not wanting to go straight through the pipe. It's going up and down and uh, all over the place. So, um, so just to give you kind of rule of thumb, a smaller engine, you need a smaller exhaust. A larger engine, you need a larger exhaust. But you want to find the correct size for the engine, because if you have one too big, You'll end up with this situation. You'll actually lose horsepower. So another thing I want to tell you guys about is every time your engine fires, there's a pulse that goes through your exhaust. And on the front of that pulse, there's pressure. And on the back side of that pulse, there's like almost a vacuum or a low pressure. And then that's your fire as it. So every time your engine fires, it has, you know, there's multiple pulses at RPMs. So you have you know, multiple pulses of pressure going through. In an ideal exhaust system, uh, like I said, you'll have that be managed right so that this isn't happening here. And if you have like a merge type of system, what happens is um, they actually, the, the pressure side from one, actually the vacuum side from one will pull the pressure side from one of the other cylinders as it goes into this exhaust. You know what I mean? Because they all merge together in that collector. Like I was showing you, right here in the collector, they'll actually one will go through and pull the other one through. And if it's got it's a really good exhaust system, they'll actually have it timed so that the one that's that's pulsing will be on time with the length of the uh, other extractor, so that it pulls the next one through, and then it just flows correctly and then goes through the exhaust system. And I believe that's how these ones are pretty well designed that way. I think this one here is also another old four tuned. Um, but I don't remember. Um, yeah, I think they were back then. They were I think they were called sidewinders. It's a really good exhaust, but the problem is it just doesn't fit on the van. So I would put it on there, and somebody else said, "Hey, put that on there." I think Jimmy Wilkinson. Thanks for the comments. Um, he's really good. If you look at if you look down and see his comments, make sure you read them. They're really good. Uh, he has some great information. Uh, and he mentioned he goes, "Hey, put that put that exhaust on there." I'm like, "Dude, I wish I could. It doesn't fit. It will not fit." You see how these pipes come out? There's it conflicts with this uh, this rear uh, apron, so it just doesn't work on the van. It does work really well on a bug. I mean, if I had a bug, I would put this engine in there. I would actually put dual carbs on it if I was putting a bug, and then I'd have to put a race trans in it and everything. It'd be very quick with this and with that you know the car i put the right size cam in there so that i could put dual carbs on it later if i wanted to they always think ahead you know when you put your cam in you might want to over cam it a little bit more than you might want it to be because then you can always add things to it later or change it without having to split the case so anyway about the exhaust um that kind of sums it up for the exhaust system make sure you guys leave comments and uh you know tell me about what you think uh, and you know course you're going to probably leave some comments about that the van didn't start right away but you know like i said we're still working on it and the other one again it takes a while for it to prime and takes a couple of pumps of the gas pedal so uh you know i usually do about four or five pumps on that one and it starts right up because it takes a lot of extra fuel with that 1776 where the 40 horse you just pump it once because it's all original all stock you know pretty much so anyway, uh, talk to you guys in the next video. Make sure you like, make sure you uh, subscribe, share it with somebody, and leave those comments. And then look at those comments down below. If you see anything that you like or dislike, make sure you like or dislike the comments below. I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching.